Hello everyone, uh, I am Hüseyin Karyal and I am the physics assistant in Eastern Mediterranean University. And today we are going to do physics 102 experiment, uh, which is magnetic force on a wire. So the main idea uh, of this experiment, or the aim of this experiment, is to find the magnetic field strength uh, by using the relationship between the force and the current. And this is our power supply, and uh, we produce a current into the wire. And also we have a magnetic poles, magnetic field, and a scales. And this power supply is produce a current, and when we put the current into the magnetic poles, we uh, produce a force. So this force is a magnetic force, and we will show this force like magnetic force is equal to current multiplied length of the wire, and multiply by the magnetic field strength, cross product, multi cross product by magnetic field strength, and then it returns to the force magnetic field is equal to current multiplied by length, multiplied by magnetic field strength, multiplied by sin theta. But now our system is normal. The magnetic field and the current is normal to each other, so we take the theta 90. So we reduce our equation to Magnetic field force is equal to current multiplied by length multiplied by magnetic field strength. So, I said before that uh, we are going to do the relation between the force and the current. So, what we are going to do in this power supply from the middle button, we just play on the current. So, what we expected, when we increase the current, because in the right side of the equation, we have a current. You see, so if we increase the current, so we expected that the force should be increased. So we just observe this relationship by uh, starting with the current 0 to the current 7. And we will see what's happening to the force. Is it increased or not? Okay, so let, let's start our experiment. Now I take the current to the 0 ampere, okay, and then I put the uh, current wire into the magnetic poles and I just make this scale equilibrium. How can we make this scale equilibrium? These two lines should be a straight line. Okay, then we understood that we make this our scale equilibrium. So, now I want to uh, measure the, the weight when the current is zero, because don't forget that the force is equal to m multiplied by g. Okay, so if you want to the, see the relationship between the current and the force. When the current is increased, the force should be increased. So what's the force? M multiplied by G. So G is the constant, so M should be increased. Okay, so we will see. So now I already make the equilibrium, to the zero ampere, so I can read it. The first line is 100, the second line is 10, the third line is one, and the fourth line is dot point zero blah blah. Okay, so now I can read it easily. This is 100, and this is 60, and this is 65, and this is uh, 0 0.49. So totally 165.49. 49 gram. So we should change it to the kilogram. How can we change the grams to the kilogram? By divided by 1,000. Okay, this is my first data. Then I increase the current to the one ampere. And then we will see that the scale is going to the up, and we should put more weight to balance it. Because we increase the current, so when we increase the current, the scale is going to the up, and we increase the, also the weight to make it balance. OK, so I just increase it to the 1 ampere. You see, the scale is going to the up. I take it to the 0 again. OK, so just I want you to to observe that when I increase the current, this scale is going to the up. For example, I'm going to the 10 ampere. You see? So we should add more weight to make it balance it. Okay, so I'm come to the 1 ampere. Yes, approximately is 1 ampere. So we should balance it. So we are now in initial masses are 165.49. So we should increase it a little bit. Just using the this one, maybe it's enough. A little bit more.
Yes, now it's approximately come to the equilibrium. So our second data, uh, weight of the second data in one ampere uh, is equal to 165.71. 165.71 gram. Okay, so I'm going to the third data, which is the second ampere. Two ampere. Yes, then I should find the straight line. I mean the equilibrium point again. So, Okay, so I think now it's in equilibrium. The scale is in this equilibrium because we increase the current, so the force automatically increases, so we should increase the weight. So now I think it's a little bit more. Yes, I think it's enough. So our mass is now 165.96. 165.96 gram. And we should change it to the kilogram divided by 1,000. Okay, so I pass to the 3 ampere. Okay, 2.99 is approximately 3. And then now we should increase the 5 to 6. And we take this one to the left side. Okay, so it comes to the equilibrium. So 166.22, 166.22 gram. Okay, I quickly pass to the four ampere. <coughs> Pardon. Okay, so the, in the 4 ampere, we find that 166.5 gram. Okay, now I pass to the 5 ampere. So you see, when we increase the current, our force increases. So, what I mean that we try to find the relationship between the force and the current, because we draw a graph that F versus I, and we will see the a line, straight line, and we should find the slope to reach the result because we are trying to find the magnetic field strength experimentally. So I want to show you this one. So this is the mass that we try to make it balance. This is the current that just we are played from 0 to 6. You can see from there, this is our table. This is the G, gravity acceleration. So this is the L the length of the wire, and this is the B magnetic field strength, and the M0 is the initial weight. Remem remember that in the initial case, we put the current zero, and this is the M0, the initial one. Okay, then in this equation, we take the G to the left side, and it becomes MG. So what's the MG means? F. So it means F is equal to I multiplied by L multiplied by B. And when we take to the I, I want to see in the so this is our equation. Force is equal to I multiplied by L multiplied by B. If we take to the I to the left side of the equation, so the equation becomes F divided by I is equal to L multiplied by B. And when we get the slope of the F versus I, then our slope is equal to L multiplied by B, then we can reach the B easily. I will show you later, Lee. Okay, now we are doing the 5 ampere.
Okay, so I should balance it again. By the way, this current wire should be didn't touch anywhere in the magnetic poles. Okay, if if it touched anywhere, you, you can't get the properly results, proper data. Okay, so a little bit more. Maybe we can do it 75. Yes. So our five ampere car data is 166.75. 160, 166.75 gram. And then we come to the last one, six ampere. The unit of the current is ampere, by the way. Okay. Okay, our last one is approximately a little bit more, I think. Okay, I think it's enough. 167.14. Yes. 167.14 gram. So at the end of the day, we should change the grams to the kilogram and then we draw a graph. Okay, now. Up to now is okay, then we going to the Excel document. Okay, let's continue. Uh, now uh, we know that our equation, uh, force, magnetic force equation, reduces to the F is equal to I multiplied by L multiplied by B. So in this equation, we know the average values of F. We know the average values of current. I mean, in this table, you can see that we increase the current and we obtain the forces, okay? So, in this equation, we are trying to find the magnetic field strength. I mean B, clearly. So, we take the I to the left side of the equation. So, our equation becomes F divided by I is equal to L multiplied by B. So, we should draw a graph. So, we should draw a graph that F versus I to reach the slope, and our slope is equal to L multiplied by B. Why? Because slope means the average Y values divided by average X values. So in this graph, our Y values is force, and our X values is current. So when we get the slope of this graph, so we reach the F divided by I, simply. So our F divided by is a slope, so our slope is 0.0031. So put the numerical value into the slope. So it means 0.0031 is equal to L multiplied by B. And L is the length of the wire, and B is the magnetic file of the string. And when you put the L in your manual, it's also giving you that the L is equal to 0.03 meter. So when you put the numeric numerical value of L into the equation, it reduces the equation just one unknown. And you can find the B experimentally easily that 0.103 Tesla. So this B is our experimental data. And in your manual, they already give you to the theoretical one. And you can use this experimentally and theoretically to find the percentage error. And I can give you the equation of the percentage error. You can find the percentage error by theoretically minus experimentally divided by theoretically multiplied by 100. Okay, thank you for listening.